Okay, so well, should yeah, let's start it. I think that's all what we have. It. Um, first off, thanks. So thank you for um, joining this session, and we're going to do use it Adobe Photoshop. I'm using Adobe Photoshop, the latest edition CC. It's on subscription. I don't know which one you're using, but most stuff what we're going to do it will actually work even on the CS6 and earlier version. So it's not very deep into the stuff. Um, and we'll go step by step. Uh, also, everyone had chance to download it, the assets file, so you can follow. If you don't, um, just raise your hand or type in a chat. Because I think I have it um, link. Yep, right here. I pasted link in a chat box for the Dropbox if um, you not yet have those files. Okay, let's overview what we're going to do. So this is our original file. And if you notice, well, not totally original, it's actually extended right here on the side and you can see a little bit repetition, which is okay. And we're going to increase canvas size. And we'll do this for the reason to fit wings in. I don't feel comfortable to cut them off. Usually I just extend canvas. Sometimes maybe, but in this case, I don't feel comfortable in this. And we'll have it multiple different layers. Touch up, smoothing, dodge and burning on the model. So we'll go through all of these steps, including adding um, the sky. And usually, I don't know if you saw my other videos, tutorials, what I do, I use a pen tool or other things to isolate model from background. And I create like perfect mask. However, with this specific style, which I found kind of interesting for me because I rotate, I find something new and I try to explore, create, but in this way, um, more paint tree, more kind of like um, Renaissance, Rembrandt, kind of more uh, spiritual in a way. I don't know how you can call this angel, spirits, whatever. And But point is this, in this way, I found the with blending mode or with paint kind of work more interesting because I can blend edge edges a little bit nice. So this is what we're going to do. Um, another start adding over the light rays, uh, adding texture to the backdrop, extended more canvas on this, add wings, and it's all specific. And notice I add wings after sky, so you almost need it twice will do this work but it is worth it for this because somehow shadows but we'll go over all of these steps i'll just want to show you what we're we going to do to our final steps color correction okay all of this so let's go ahead on a beginning actually you know what let me do this way it's much easy okay um let's look first how it was shot if you're interested in this it was use it one light um i use it white lighting um from paul buff doesn't matter but it is about i think 600 watt and it was using deep parabolic softbox to have this isolated light on source and you can actually see if you come closer you can see where the reflector was on her eyes so when you look on the eyes, you can see the position it was located. And uh, all of this on the floor stuff, it is um, uh, teddy bear guts, we can say, or the, um, I think it's feel something, feel something stuff. I got it one big box. If you're interested to do this, it's on Amazon. It's like 20 or 30 bucks for one box. And this is all of this. It was barely scratch. I, I think with all full boxes of, if I open, I can fill up all room probably. So it was plenty of this feeling, feel stuff for the clouds, kind of nice. And I definitely I will use this for other photo shoots, but overall, if you're interested there. A gray screen I'm using on a purpose was select this. One, the gray for the blending mode, it's almost neutral. It does not have it cast any colors or shadows. In Photoshop, it's worked very well with blending mode. And also this texturing kind of a little bit 
discoloring or all this crumbling it's add additional um effect to this so i can blend a little bit better so this is i choose on purpose that backdrop to put it in and she's sitting on the apple boxes and other stuff will just kind of create elevation so we shot few um her jewelry same as from the amazon just got it some i don't know it's not expensive but it is very simple going forward and we shot a lot of thousands different images compositions so you can always select if you're interested um because the covid and everything i have very limited classes just with lighting when we go set up lightings but <clears throat> So let's go right now. So this is our image. Let's begin. I will leave it here as a reference, but what we're going to do, and if you guys can follow with me, that will be very good. We're going to open um, our file in camera raw, the original, <coughs> sorry, the raw file. Okay, if you look on a raw file, things what is jumping eyes instantly. You see how overblowing here? Even we still have it information, but problem with this, that it's still a little bit too highlight. So and for that reason, another one, so usually what I do, I have it in camera raw highlights in the main tab, and I take highlights on. It will flatten a little bit, but it is preserve and restore information. If we look on our histogram, let's go back. We have it no overshooting. We have it right here black which clipping and it's because of this box you can see the soft box location so i don't worry about this but majority it's a gray dark gray which located about on the middle and we don't lose any information highlights so because of this i know if i going highlights down all restoration uh, information on the bright areas will be restored next we're going down shadows Sometimes I will bring in, but be careful because bring shadows in will remove some shadows, but it will create digital noise coloring. So depend on the camera you're using. Another one to maybe want to avoid this. Um, next, and by the way, if you have any questions, you can unmute, ask questions, or tap in the chat anytime. Next, we have the details. In details, I'm using sharpening, and sharpening it's usually between 60 and 70, plus minus around there. It does not add too much sharpness, but I'm shooting on Canon and currently I'm using Canon R5, which is have it in camera anti aliasing filters. And by doing this, it's helped me to restore original sharpness. So it's the only reason why I'm doing this. We skip four second lumination, uh, luminosity and all the color mixes and we'll jump to the optics session. And right here we have it important tabs remove chromatic abbreviation and use it profile correction if you notice right here the discoloring you see the purple and this it's because due to the lens or other effect you have it chromatic any even any any even absolutely perfect lens will have it chromatic abbreviation and by enable this it will fix it you can see how it's gone <coughs> sorry it's well fixed very well uh, be careful on some of this profile in this you can introduce um moraine some kind of parent distortions when you're doing with the uh, high iso but in this case because i shot on 100 iso 100 in the studio i don't need to worry about this and if you're using profile what it does you can see it's removed some vignetting and adjust because she was like in the middle of the shot not big vignetting by the way, this is was shot on uh, 24 105 stock lens um, for with a Canon. And I think we can pull out information. So this is about changes I done. Now we can go to luminosity. And because we flatten, we lost some of the dimension. And on an image, what is important to understand that color it's give it one information but color does not give it us shape luminosity or black and white is what give it us shape and shape created in a way if we take saturation to zero the darker we can see instantly what is what's calm because we highlight and highlights usually closer to us or the bigger and black smaller and far away 
So and you can see by the hands how we can accept some of this. Um, rim light is interesting, but it's built by on, uh, your experience. As you grow up, you start accepting uh, different lights. And uh, rim lights does not work when kids look on image. It's very interesting, but adults with more experience, they kind of see it. But point is this, just ignore this. What I want to say, it is luminosity or black and light, this lights, it's what give it a shape. And that we will work on that. So let's go back and restore to zero. Well, back to our situation. Um, now we're going to color mixer and luminosity tab. Here, by working with orange and red and yellow, we can also increase the increase on our model and because we flatten a little bit so i want just a little bit not too much just bring a little bit light up we'll do this more with uh, dodge and burn when we're creating so usually but i still want to restore a little bit permission any notice right here we still have it a nice not overblowing and a white skin and at the same time we have it all these necessary details Okay, when we're done, before we open, one more point, let me show you. If you look on the bottom click, you'll open the camera preferences. Notice I'm doing in um, color space, Adobe RGB. It's no reason. You can do an sRGB or other color space. I'm doing an Adobe RGB. It's my workflow, my camera. I set there for Adobe RGB. I'm processing here and other color space. So I'm just keeping same color space through all of my devices. And this is a reason why I selected. Um, and I'm using 16-bit channel depth. Many times when you start, you work with 8-bit. And some filters in Photoshop still require 8-bit channel. However, I used with a higher information with 16-bit because I don't like um, the steps of creating. When you do gradients, you will have those um, lines and everything. So I don't want them to be there. So I want the smoother gradients and it's 16 bit okay this is our settings next i'm going to open you can always hold down alt or i think shift open as object i usually open as a normal image because we're going to modify and adjust it okay here's our first image and before continue i want to remove some of these elements like i want to remove here uh softbox and i want to fix this corner and after we can extend our image so before actually we removing we're going to use for this patch tool to remove but problem is right now it's a black color and white does not match so if we remove it you will see have it some problem so example let me go grab it with patch tools we remove it and you can see how the colors and other ones start working give it the mess um, what i recommend to do you can use the or stamp tool clone tool okay you can sample some area around and don't worry too much just a very fast mark like this okay so now if you go back and if you want to reuse this tool it's all much matching way better and you can see by the colors so it's a very rough um, use and again i'm just going closer by the edges because we're going to overlay don't worry too much about how it's blending mostly i'm just want to keep it about same coloring okay same with this element here you can go just select and we can go drag drop and it's adjusting so sometimes we maybe lose a little bit but it's okay we'll restore in the future overall you just take all of these kind of issues maybe we have it and uh, fix them okay maybe just a little bit i do like sometimes when it's leave it those lines um the wrinkles they kind of will add this painting effect that we're going to use so this is our first step was what we've done. So our next step, what we want to do, it is um, creating a fixing on a skin. So right here, let's go closer to her face. And 
when I work with the skin, I, in a normal, I try to preserve skin texture, maybe some other elements. However, this will be our angel and it's representing like perfection. So we want to little bit remove all these elements. You have it several ways we can do the longer way is used frequency separation to clean up your skin very well we won't do here all what we're going to do create new layer let's call it a touch and we're going to use it healing brush tool which is actually using somewhat like frequency separation by using alt or option key you sample area and it's a and you just mark off and you can see how it's working very well this tool so you just got it and you're cleaning up be sure you sample close area because what it does it the it's a sampling luminosity channel as well so it's creating like a texture look it's why it's almost like uh localize the frequency separation kind of elements so you can see i'm holding click alt and i'm just sampling constantly areas and i'm fixing the skin okay this is one way if you are lazy and it's totally optional you can use it different plugins to do this and let me show you example so let's hide this one i'll create new layer and let's go this test very touch and the plugin if you interested it says filter actually sorry it's not Plug in its filter, retouch for me, heal. And actually, that one is work very good, but um, you need to watch out for some elements. I'll show you what's happening. It's analyzing, okay, creating, fixing all the stuff. Let's create mask so we can preview and apply. I'm just put 100% straightforward, all that stuff. And you can see how it is, remove it. Notice it's removed some stuff like hair right here, mess up. So if we look on what it's created, it does create in some areas, which is nice because you can put it, a mask over this and just remove the areas on the apply where you want it. But if you process, this has worked very well if you process a lot of images. Um, however, for now, I don't want it. We'll go do by the hand, again, without it touching. And we'll just going doing. So I'm doing this. Uh, anybody have any questions so far? Um, I had a just a question on a previous step. Um, as opposed to doing the patch tool, do you ever do like content to where fill fill, or do you know, like, is there a reason you do the patch versus that? Um, we will actually use the content where fill in a second. So we'll do this. Um, it just depends what working. You know, I found honestly, Photoshop is so complex and just only dodge and burn. I know people doing this on a clearer layer, on a gray layer, and this and that way. It is so many ways to skin the cat here. So it's it depend whatever is how it's work for you. If you find workflow that you feel familiar and it's work for you, I'll recommend stick with that because it's nothing wrong with this. Um, I just found that for me, patch tool, it give me a little bit more control. Mm. Yeah, I saw, um, Danny, I saw you posted, you need to get another computer. Okay, and... Uh, there you go. I hope you're there now. Okay. What um I'm personally I'm watching all the time all different editors, retouchers, see how what they're doing techniques. It's what you want to progress in this, and uh, I would seriously I would recommend for you just to go and experiment see which workflow you prefer okay we heard some feedback from somewhere okay you might want to mute yourself danny 
I think you're the feedback. Okay, so right here we have it a little bit effect. So I'm just going. Um, we're going to smooth something. Okay. Also, one thing I need you to pay attention on this. Right now, if you get closer, I don't know if you can see very well or not the grain on her skin. And this is doesn't matter what camera you're using or whatever, you always will have a grain because pixelization we have it so far. Okay. And uh, when we're going to smooth, we remove some of this uh, pixelization from there. And the problem is with that, if we do this, it will look strange when we have pixels, not pixels, when after we smooth. So it's the reason why we will add grain to the end. But just let you know, I will remind you again about this, but just overall. So this is the reason we're going to do this. So right here, we have it, our image. And if you look on a one that we're going to do, Right here, if we look on our wings, you can see how big and tall they are. So what I do, I'm usually going to, okay, let me go to my wings. And we'll move the wings around quite a bit. Okay, and if I'm right, those is wings, They're just preloading on my computer. So it's 14. I think it was these wings I was using. Okay. So I'll just drag and drop. And I don't know if you guys got it or not them, but I'll just put it inside. Okay. All the reason that what I'm putting the wings here, um, it is to see how big, how much I need to expand. Okay. So if we're going to um, size increase, you can see we need it going about 720, 7,000, and this going up. So we can play a little bit with resizing on this. Think about it right there, maybe. Something like this. Um, and the size in this, it just gave me about 8,200 pixels maybe about 10,000 pixels. Yeah, we can do that one. Um, one thing, of course, I want to do just hide those layers we did before. And when I do this size, let's uncheck the lock so it will be content aware. Now we can enable content aware stuff. And now I can go to what is 8,200, 10,000, something like this about here. And we can go up about 10,000. Photoshop does a very good job on actually um, extend it. Notice what I'm doing. I'm also trying to keep it here in this corner. So work by rules of third. Okay, now we'll go press enter. And sometimes I've found the tool not always work very well. It's repeating and we can see hands and legs. If that happening, you want to move in a small increments. Because sometimes I look and it's small, small only um, between, like, for example, this will be very close, will be small element. So I want to extend and I will be moving in small segments, increments till Photoshop pick up. Okay, right here. <coughs> Sorry, and you can see right here we have it here leg and it's reason why. So if you have it like this problem, what I recommend you to do is uh, make small increments, okay, like, for example, right here. And then Photoshop will read properly and in cre and creating. But that one is wasn't as bad as sometimes when I look and I created bigger ones and all is happening. So let this uh, Photoshop process it. We have some repetition going on. Don't worry about this. But I do like this with new uh, content aware. And that option not in CS6. But it does, if you look at the diagonal lines, it's actually a very, have a very good prediction do, tool to actually see what to do. So, okay, let me go restore back to 10,000 and 8,000 about here. Okay, we also can just go and cut a little bit on the bottom. I think around here, maybe. I 
there and we can rework on this later it's what i sometimes i done if if you look on a image um before i think i extend even more just to create this light fall through but it is um at the point up to you you are the artist you are the one who creating whatever message you want put it how you want to do it overall this is just preparing our backdrop and this is probably one of the reasons why i don't um use a smart object on this because we're changing so much it's kind of um does not worth so right here i can see some problems and as we're working on this we can take another patch tool and we can just you know Notice what I say because it's darker. It's got funny colors. So we'll just uh, rework a little bit on these colors. We can take um, some segment here, maybe. Move down. Just adjust, play a little bit with the positioning and other elements. So overall, cleaning and fixing. And with this tool, with uh, our patch tool, you can see it's a little bit, I don't know, it's easy to me just to create and Photoshop does a very good job blending things. Just try to look for the repetition in a pattern and maybe just move it, create slightly. This is okay, right here a little bit. Just remove those patterns, mix them around. Uh, we'll do a little bit more obviously afterwards. But even right now, as we're doing, and we look on previous, you can see how different it is already. And um, I think I maybe extend a little bit too far. It's depend on the wings size. So what do we have it? I think I did my wings maybe a little bit too big here, or we can um, readjust later afterwards. So it's up, we're creating. Any questions so far? Okay. And I mean, I'm doing very good. Okay, no questions. Um, so we did retouch her skin. We did extend canvas to matching, so we can continue now. Uh, let's um, smoothing a little bit her skin. And I sometimes do dodge and burn before I do smoothing skin, but uh, then I do dodge and burn again. And the reason is smoothing will take off some of this shape because it is effect not just the color it will also affect of course the luminosity channel so we'll go above and we'll press Control shift alt e command option alt e it's handful things so you create new layer by <clears throat> take all layers and combine them together make them as one so we'll create this layer and next we'll go to filter noise dust and scratches dust and scratches what's happened it's look on the threshold on the contrast we'll put just to the zero don't worry about this radius is more important because radius it's tell how many of those pixels by the threshold they needed to um blend so it's work like imagine radius of of course of them so we'll go a little bit lower maybe around this area so i can see preview it can recognize like eye shape, everything, but it's skin smooth. Just minimize some small details. We'll go click OK on this. And after it's completed, we'll go hold down Alt or Option and click on the Create Mask. It will create mask on this layer and color it with a black color. So the effect we just applied, we actually don't see it. It's all masked out. Next, we need to use it actually white brush to paint in this effect and i will do this a lot just create effect hiding and paint over again <coughs> sorry so for this i'm using normal brush opacity 10 percent i usually have it float hundred sometimes i'm going down on the flow depend but i find that this work fine and smoothing zero so it is basic set um i'm using mouse i don't use it by well i have vicom pad but i using mouse because i do a lot of 3d graphics for me it's kind of hard to switch and that is the reason why i'm using low opacity if you have a vicom pad and you enable torch in 
So you probably can set what is feel for you more comfortable. So right here, all what we do, we just kind of start painting over skin. I am avoiding eyes. I'm avoiding hair. I'm avoiding lips. This is purely just for the skin. And all what it does, it minimizes details. It's all what it does. It's reduce this noise, reduce uh, details. And remember, I says about grain, it is get rid of also this is of the grain. So we need a kind of removing to restore in the future. But what it does, like right here, you can see on her cheek, it will smooth out this acne or whatever it was. So it's creating. And we'll restore some of this texture a little bit later with the grain, but for now. And uh, one thing um, I mentioned in some other my tutorials, but I do paint with oil and other stuff, and it's helped me to analyze how I was painting. And to create skin and painting, you paint colors, and after you just take shade down with a bristle brush, and you just go on the top and just kind of like, I don't know, smash, smash, smash that to create those areas of the texture of the pores. So in the similar here, what we've done, we actually reduce a little bit this to simulate how the brush will work. Okay, let's go over the fingers. Just smooth it, not too much, but just creating a little bit of the, the reduced detailizations because our cameras, they're actually very good on the bring details. We'll go down under her chin. So we'll smooth here. This moving gets actually work nice to remove noise. If you have it shot where you have it a uh, digital noise, like color digital noise or other ones, you go and get rid of this um, techniques will work very well to remove that digital noise from there as well. Okay, so I'm smoothing your arms a little bit. Okay, let's go right here. Short key for increase brush bigger it or smaller, you can use a bracket key. And this make will make your brush up and down. Um, you don't necessarily need to do learn um hot keys or in the Photoshop, but it does help. It's make a little bit of work faster. And uh, what I recommend for you just to learn one shortcut per session. And soon enough you will notice you'll have a lot of you will know how to do all of this stuff okay so yeah and right here you can see the guts of teddy bears all over places or pillows whatever you prefer okay so we'll smoothing just a little bit okay reducing some of this texturing okay let's zoom out and we'll just go and click alter options on the mask so we can preview and you can see right here mask it sometimes i do it's helped me see where i need to kind of touch up maybe miss some areas smoothness okay also other things you can do as you're selecting this you can go to filter blur Gaussian blur and you can set maybe to about a little bit blurring so it's make just a little bit smaller okay click OK let's go click alt again and there we have it smooth her skin so it's already start looking a little bit better the next step we're going to do it's a dodge and burn step and we're going to create a new layer let's go this called dodge and burn shift backspace or you can go to edit fill and we're going to fill with a 50 percent gray normal mode 100 percent opacity okay this is what i says many people have a different ways to do some people do on a clear layer some people do on this some people use a dodge and burn tool and other things i'm just done this way for reasons so i can preview my dodge and burn channel um with a clearer level it's kind of hard to preview you need to create background layer to see it it's only reason so on this gray 50 percent gray 
If we go and switch to any contrast modes like lighter, uh, like uh, overlay soft light, whatever, it's almost become invisible because 50% does not affect anything. So we'll go to soft light and we'll use it black brush, same 10% soft opacity. I want to be sure it is soft round. We want as much softness as possible. And at this point, I'm just going to paint a little bit over. If it's too much, you can just reduce your flow. Or if you're using Vicom pad, you can use it this as well. So all what right now I'm doing, I'm painting about where I can see the shadows. And I'm not creating new shadows of this. I'm just enhancing as a shape going. So all what I'm doing, I'm just enhancing in those elements. Um, here, maybe touch up. You can use it D key, which reset black and white background, foreground. To switch be between foreground and background, you can use X key. And it's we can see a switch between black and white. And that's what I do. I switch to white to make highlights. Okay, like right here, your nose, maybe lips. Okay, key to increase. X to switch back to black. And if your hand, one hand on a keyboard on those, you can constantly just very nice switch between highlights and the shadows. And that will help you create. All what we're doing, it's adding extra this emphasized shape. Remember what I says, when lighter and darker, they're creating. And if you just go ahead, if you not feel familiar, you can play with dodge and burn a little bit more. And you'll find this is actually a very powerful tool, one of the retouchers kind of must to know tool. Okay. So we'll go right there, create a little bit darker on her hand. And we'll create also lights on her a little bit later. Right now, when I, you notice, I don't necessarily work with follow light. Right now, I'm just working with the shaping. So we'll just add a little bit more on the shapes. And we'll have it another dodge and burn. I would recommend for you, if you're doing this, um, use a different uh, multiple layers. Don't try to do everything in one um, layer. So for example, this dodge and burn just for the model. I will have it another dodge and burn for the clouds, another one for areas. So in this case, if something went wrong, you can restore it, you can change, you don't need um, change everything. And so far right here, what we have, you can see we enhance just slightly. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And again, um, this workflow, it's maybe work for you, maybe not, but in a way we're going. It uh, adds some highlights, and of course, I'm looking like overall image. And by the way, notice on the right corner, I have a thumbnail of this image. This has helped me to create overall. It's not just for navigation. For me, it's a preview. So if I create um, poster, book covers, I'm doing for social media or anything that may be display. I want to see how it's look. If I did this as a book cover, this will be quite a bit small. I need to zoom in because if I see this on Amazon when you scroll through, it's look too small. I mean, for as a fine art is good because we can do it. But overall, I think if we done in other ways, that is helping a lot. This okay. Um, so we done this. We added. Any questions you guys have so far? No? You falling asleep? <laughs> no, I think you got it. Okay, okay. good. Okay, so let's, um, this is what we've done. And actually, I think it is much bigger. Yeah, it's, it's bigger. So we'll go back and kind of have to fix that. Okay, next, what I want to do is add sky to this. And uh, you probably received that image. I don't know if you, uh, you download it. And right here, when I look on this image, the lighter, it's a little bit on a left, on a right, and light's going from right. So what I want to do, it's hold down till it's composing. I want to turn around 
image you can reposition you can even set as you like it you know but i think on actually rotate okay let's go right here we'll stretch the image sky going up to down so we'll just go increase scale right there and it should be very large image if you got this um sky and one thing i think it's go from top so we'll go to edit transform flip vertically so it will go from top like right here lights and we'll also go and hold down alt key and click on a mask and it's hiding now next we're going to take our brush and we'll start brushing usually again how i said before i select the model and you can try to do this you actually can create photoshop does very good if you just select subject sometimes it's going over subject <laughs> create but i don't think in this case yeah we have a subject need create below so if like we go create here new layer and uh, select subject it's actually will select it and it does okay not bad job so we can do this as a cheat tool um it's help us but you again you can see right here by her legs and other areas we end up doing same amount job then we just paint in um i did find i only like to do um pen tool for the reason with hair but we it's totally different video for this so right here we have it um our image and one thing what i from experimenting i tried all different things i would recommend as a masking select color and select color lighter by her about so if you're going black and white you can select actually um you need to select probably this layer below okay yeah let's go select below color so we'll have it about gray lighter gray select you can select different ones i probably want maybe right here and this way when we start painting it will stack to specific so let's go ahead 100 percent opacity <coughs> and we can start painting over masking so we're unmasking the screen we have by the model so we'll go do this way and i'm doing very rough if this is too much you can always go back oh i think it is too much it does not accept mine there you go yeah that's better okay so it was 100 percent i want to have a texture come true and sometimes when i look like right here you can see how the texture coming through this is what i um personal i like it you can experiment but i like those wrinkles i like the effect like it's a backdrop almost looking but it's alive notice again as we're going the grain is different from grain on her so this is what we need to rework afterwards and i'm just going paint usually i step a little bit over here and this is will provide us with very beautiful light spill and let's make our compositing blend even better together so it's what we want to do okay we'll just go a little bit over hands you can go and select um okay we're ignoring here we'll we'll add a little bit different opacity afterwards and if you go over her hands or other things don't worry you can always reverse and just remove this okay right here and just paint over okay till i'm doing this um kind of painting things any questions guys and again notice as we're painting because it's overlay over her i like how it's creating this kind of like a light spill on her almost So it's creating a very nice um, clothes and other stuff. Okay.
Okay, let me go a little bit more over, so I'll show you other things, what has happened. So, for example, we've gone... Okay, X. And we've gone, like, over her legs. So, anytime when this happened, you can go back inverse color, and you can painting back in. So, it's, of course, non-destructive. It's all going through the mask. And sometimes, depending on how it's look, you can go back and forward. And you notice right here, we don't have a very sharp edge, so we can work in, okay? So, right, let's paint a little bit in, in these areas. Okay. So, X, again, we'll painting in. Sometimes I do create masks on the model and i'll go this way so it's up to you um i'm not necessarily a big fan what's going on right now here with the how much grain we're getting from at clouds and i think the reason i i create a little bit bigger so we have it more grain coming we can remove that grain and i'll show you in a second how we can do by applying additional filter to that so remember how we did it, dust and scratches. So same things if we apply to that filter, our clouds will lose a little bit more painting effect. I will lose. Okay, let's go right here, close to the clouds. We'll just painting, and then like magic start blending well together. Okay, right here. Let's go to. Stand, painting over. Uh, we can go click on Alt on the mask so we can preview where do I miss it. It'll just help a little bit. Okay. Yeah, right here we have a white spot. But with this gray layer, layer layer what i found out for me it was much easier than just have it multiple with the white so just preset how what density i wanted and just paint with the density and you see right there we have this nice wrinkles it's look like a backdrop so this is what i like it about this um with your hair her hair um what I said before, I select specifically the gray background so it's matching with clouds and everything. And you can see we don't paint even over here, but it is blending very well with the sky. And this is kind of, um, if you want to do this, produce for the people or do like photo shoot or whatever, keep it several templates for you several backgrounds. Like I have a dark maroon, I have a cyan, I have a gray, other ones. And depend what I have it in mind, I will put those ones so it will make my job easy. As a compositing, you need to think of the final product before you even start making your first uh, shots or whatever. So you need to know how you will end up and you need to kind of plan all of these steps, what better way to do, how the lighting, what background to use it and all this stuff. So it's in the future you can reuse it. Okay, so we added our uh, backdrop here. Yes. Uh, it looks like Danny asked a question. I'm not sure if you addressed that one or not. Yeah, I did not see. So we'll save tons of work by selecting subject, copying a paste. Yeah, I just was showing this. It is, um, it's what I usually do. My, If you look on my other compositing, I usually have it um, double mask. So it's a meaning, <coughs> sorry, I have it pen tool. And I take pen tool and I use it with, a, oops, okay. And I use it on a hard edges. Like right here, I will use a pen tool to go over the model. And I will select it by the hair, around hair or small things. I will use it color selection or other ones. And I use it a uh, combination be between a vector and raster mask. So I use it a little bit more complex masking. But I do those. Um, almost all time when I did compositing and I still do them all the time. However, um, this is a little bit different things I'm exploring. Okay. And um, the reason is 
I don't know, I found this interesting way to do it. And uh, I, will, I will recommend for you just explore sometimes, try different things, what, what do you find? For me, it was interesting to find a way painting give me personal feeling like I, <laughs> I'm not just a masking, I'm actually painting something in. But yes, you can use it whatever masking tools, whatever you feel more comfortable just go forward and i think i even have a video about similar things when i done but i was using just a uh, masking and if you're using masking um reason is i'm using the pen tool i want sharp edges when sharp edges need to be because in photoshop i can very easy create atl skin or uh, soft and i can create harder um harder edge is much much harder to do this okay just a second let me um here okay so um hopefully this is answer your questions or not because can I say you can use it, and I did before. I show you how to create select subjects, so you can do from that point. Uh, one with draw right here, you can see a little bit softness sometimes come up on edges. Okay, so right there, and but it is nice. It's blending very well with the backlighting. And I don't know. It's green. Anyway. So hopefully this address your questions. Uh, let's go next. We'll go add wings at this point. And uh, you guys, okay. Oh, we have them right here, this wing. So this is, I think this is much bigger, larger wings from what I have it in my original. Maybe the same, let me see. About same, a little bit bigger, doesn't matter. Okay, so the wings, what I'm going to do, it's I'm just positioning, see how they look. You can use it command control T to readjust them, reposition. I think maybe around this way, point. or like this. Okay. Um, these wings, uh, yeah, probably right there. Okay. These wings, um, if you guys are interested, I don't know, any one of you with a 3D, does anyone does 3D? Okay, if you do or are interested to do 3D, this one is done with a DAS Studio. So it is free application, you can download it and they have a lot of content. That's how they make money by sell the 3D content. So I purchased these wings there and I got an application and I uh, set textures, I adjust lighting, I create all the stuff, positioning, I play with this in render. It does because they're actually quite a bit large size. I think they're like 8,000 pixels by something, very big ones for the details. So it's take a long time render, but you can pre-render some elements and reuse it. You can build your own library of this um, if you're interested. So right here, let's say I have it, my wings done. And next I'm going to, again, Alt or Option and hide them. Um, there are it, the... Uh, the wings by themselves, if you notice, and let me actually click on them, on control and click on them, we can create a mask. So technically you could done this and um, just fill up and creating the wings already masked out because it is uh, PNG, they already pre-masked. And if you do this way, it's fine. What we need to do um, before you actually fill up, and if you do this way, you want to blend if you're doing with this mask and do this actually let's go um, destroy the mask i'll show you tip as you're doing so for example you have your perfect mask okay right here you create your perfect mask you can go next uh, select modify contract we contract by maybe about our uh, three pixels okay so they're going down and next we're going select modify feather and we must modify maybe by two feather or two and now if we're creating a mask you can see right here a special press alt to show you you can see 
this edge it's become gradient so it's meaning if we create a mask now our edge it's a softer notice what's happening before and after oops actually right here let me hide you see how this edge becomes softer we want to do this and as i say we can easily create soft and we can hide by by doing this it start blending and looking nice so we can do this way um, the reason is why I want secondary mask on this because we need hide under model. If any time when you create additional mask, you have a two options you can do if you want to preserve this mask and apply another one. You can create all this object, convert to the smart object, convert to smart object, or you can create this as the folder, put this inside the folder, and now on this group, like wings call we can create new mask and now we can mask additional so it, this is way if you want to add multiple rasterized mask on each layer layer you can have it a raster and vector mask so you have you can have a two masks on one layer but if you need it more you need it to do different ways so i'm just going over folder and just put it there and reason so we can have it just erase right here some of the behind her. Again, if if you have it, of course, if you have the mask of the person, you can do this as well. Make a little bit, um, just select mask this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just erase a little bit by her wings. Usually I paint wing in, in my other tutorials, but right here we'll just reverse and we'll just erase. But I'm erasing a little bit aggressively so we'll paint back in. I just want to see where we're going to paint in. And notice why we did sky before we did wings. So now even right here we have it semi transparency. We have it sky coming through, but it is at this nice shadow of the sky. So it's actually work in our advantage as we want to do. Let's go add a softer. And we're painting in and I'm using uh, just overall if you're not yet familiar with the Photoshop on, on a brush tool if you press one two three or whatever you can see how it's changed opacity so if you very fast press one one it will give it 11 if you press one hold down and press now three it's become 30 percent so it's much easy if you do this uh, for example, if I need to paint back in this piece of, I press 10x and we'll just painting in. Let's go x. And we'll go 30%. So it's why sometimes shortcuts, it's kind of nice to know. It will help you a little bit in the future to do a little bit faster the job. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I think one, um, so right there, they look okay. X1, bring back a little bit wings right there. Okay, <clears throat> so at this point, we have our wings kind of paint, except, but I notice right here, they look a little bit isolated. So what we want to do, we want to select 10% opacity, black color, and we want just a little bit add opacity to end of the wing so it will create transparency because if you look on the feathers feathers somewhat transparent and this way we'll just add a little bit transparency to them so we want to on the edges with a single wing single kind of like this okay we'll need to add lights going from here to highlight uh, to make glow the wing so that will do next i think right here about right <coughs> okay so we are what do we have it one hour do you guys need to take breaks or should we going well you can take breaks if you need it i don't need a look on that anyway um next let's add texture to where she's seating and for that one you can use it multiple different textures 
the one which I give it, it's kind of rock and it's what we're going to do. We'll just drag in. The lights always look where the light's coming from. So it's coming from about above. In this case, we'll just drag maybe around like right there. So tap, place it. Okay. Next, what we want to do, create new mask, Alt, and click on a mask. It's hiding. We'll take our tool and we'll start with white color painting in. Notice as I'm painting, it's not necessarily blend very well because we'll need switch mode. We want to switch the blending mode to multiply. You can try different ones and see which work. For example, I think in some cases overlay or soft light may work better. It does not necessarily change how she's sitting, but I just like it's adding extra um, elements, extra like rock looking or something, extra things to positioning. Okay, and we'll just uh, add a little bit there. Kind of like rock looking. Um, in some other ones where I have it more, um, you can see more elements. So I've done this and it's actually just help look more interesting on this material, more like there's something going on there. Okay, so we add one texture, we add wings, we have it our sky, we have a dodge and burn. So the next one, we want to add a little bit painting effect, cleaning your hair and some other ones. For this one, Shift, Control, Alt, E, Command, Option, Alt, E, create new layer. And let's go call it hair because majority is what I'm going to do, but we will apply to the wings as well. And what's happening? <coughs> Why I'm doing this? If we go and look closer on a hair, we represent, we look on a hair as a single string. We, we like this, but with the shooting with pixelization and other elements, it's look this line it's like not just going with the hair it's going cross hair and it's what make look a little bit messy uh we're going to filter stylize oil paint and then all paint usually i'm doing stylization 10 clean and stand scale zero one brush for this one just zero one so we'll do the basic um i want enhance a little bit more on the depth and for this one, we'll go just filter, sharpening. We'll do unsharp mask on this. It will help with edge definitions and we'll just pop up about 200, whatever. So you can see it's a little bit in. Let's click OK. And we'll go and click on a mask, Alt, and click on mask to hide. Next, we'll take our brush, 10%, white, and we'll start brushing in. We don't need brush 100% because sometimes we'll start having this some distortions, I want to avoid them, but I do want a little bit emphasis in the hands. You can play with different um, type of the blending. For example, you can try soft light, uh, lighter overlay screen if it's brighter. So you can try play around. I just found the normal just work very good in this case. And all what it does was just a little bit adding um, to this and you can see it's bring some nice in the darker areas so overall um this tool work very well i found out when i work with the like uh rembrandt lighting and i have the flowers artificial flowers um it's help on those flowers bring them like real painting we'll do a little bit on her eyebrows as well um on a beard on the guys if they have a beard also right here if she have a wig and you want to blend wig with the skin. If you do this one, it's actually done very, very good on, on that one. Okay, so we add here. Okay, let's go zoom out. And right here we have the wings. I want probably just a little bit add to the wings. So let's go as example, look, and you can see, you just add this somewhat paint kind of brushing brush strokes effect to the I think just uh, emphasize almost creating this painting effect on us. Okay, let's just go very fast over here. Okay, another one, so you can try same things if you like or not. Like these clouds, they look a little bit artificial. So with paint tool, they look more like a brush strokes. 
So again, it will help us perceive like the all was painting, like this um, clouds was taking with a brush and the paint with the brush. So it's all what we faking this way. Okay, don't overdo too much, but again, at these, add a little bit of cleanliness and add this brush effect. Okay, we're still okay, not falling asleep. So good. Okay, next, let's do this way. Um, <clears throat> if you look right here, the wings, we need to make them glow. So we'll go create a new dodge and burn. Oops, right here. So in this dodge and burn, again, we fill up with 50% gray, normal. We'll switch to soft light. Okay. And next, what we want to do, it is reset black and white. We want a global image to kind of dodge and burn. One of, I think maybe, no, I think this is about right for her face. Maybe just like this in the corner. Bring this just a little bit down. I'm readjusting, see if it's composition wise. So I think this will should work just fine. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to uncheck content where, so it will take a little bit time, but we don't growing, so that is okay. Um, let's go from here, dodge and burn. We'll have it our brush, 10% white color. This is um look how it's going with lights. So we're going to light from the top from this point, and we can also just make like these strokes. You have uh, two options. <coughs> you can click. Hold down shift key and click this is will create straight line okay we can do this way or you can just paint in and this is up to you but overall what i want to do i want to create this source of light like on the top and i just want paint down we don't yet going on here wings or anyway we're just adding overall global lightings effect where you want to do Okay, let's go switch to the black and we'll just add darken opposite of her. So we'll have it like dark and light. Okay, a little bit right there. Maybe around here, just darken her feet. So this way is you look overall on the image on your corner and you can see how it's already um, a lights going. So this is one dodge and burn light global and we can come back remember what i says you always come and do more uh work on this actually one more things we need to add here and that is a ring around her head hello we want to add and that one let me go to actually download it so we'll have it you guys um if you got it it should be photoshop uh psd um ring 2.psd format and what it does it's just a ring i'm rendering in 3d software and it should have an alpha channel i'll show you in a second okay so let's go open right here and if you click on a channels you'll notice we have an alpha channel so just go hold control or command key and click on alpha and it will isolate the ring okay now we go on the layers here and we can create a mask so this will just hide for us. Um, you can always right click, convert to smart objects. So in this case, almost any time when I do resizing, I will convert to a smart object. So now we can take this ring, drag on our image and just place it. Command control T to resize mode. So we can resize it. And usually the ring, you can um, see how big it is. It was about around this head of the size of the head kind of positioning and head should be on the middle on the center of this um you can create as you want it doesn't really matter but we'll just do this way and now for this ring i also want to um hide it so we'll go create new layer you same if you want it do otherwise you can press ctrl and adjust will mask this way so you can do that way as well and then create new layer 
so it will isolate it again it doesn't really matter which how you like it point is what we need to do it's um right here we need it to hide this area so let's go ahead select maybe a zero and i'm just uh, painting with soft brush out Run here, let's go select smaller. Okay, we also probably want to take opacity overall and just decrease so it does not stay as much. Okay. We created this um, ring. Now we can also add glowing to this ring and we can do by selecting ring and applied. Um, I'll show you screen another one. So we'll do that way. But before let's go ahead back to create new dodge and burn. And this is will be for the wings. Okay, we'll fill up with 50% gray soft light. Have okay, our brush selected. White 10%. And I'm going just a brush right here. Where's the wings? Because I want this effect of the glowing kind of going on them. And doesn't matter if they you step a little bit off, it's fine because the wings glowing and they produce kind of like lighting going in. Okay. Also, if you need it, press X key to switch to black, darker, and we can add a little bit like right here behind. The one thing what I would probably recommend, take this layer, dodge and burn, drag to the wings, okay, and just above, and use it Alt key or Option, clip it. So you can also just clip this layer. So in this case, when we apply shadow it will apply only to the wings or highlights on this case we can safely just go in right there add shadows from her to the wings okay same if we need brighting up it will apply only so this is just the clipping layers okay and we'll just add this highlight the one thing about this also when i render i render this wing specifically for the backlight so you can see some glowing on the edges happen there okay we're done this way so let me go check what we have so far and you can see this is because it was my work project so i did a little bit different ways here um applied Same to some color balance, it because the wings wasn't, but we'll do this after. So we're almost actually very good with similar what I was done. And color balance, I think we in, wings look okay. We don't need to worry about this. Um, I'm still not sure about here. We'll just work with that as well. Okay, <clears throat> next I want to apply glow. Before I apply glow, um, we have it clouds, we have this, but I want to add additional atmospheric effect so we'll create new layer this is a ring so let me rename this the one thing i would recommend um make color so for example dodge and burn usually i set as a purple or violet so in this case i know the color do absolutely nothing it just only visualize help you to know what's done on some layers for example if elements like a sky or whatever we go green so any element where i have imported so i'll know they are green some other ones actually it's right here will be this one will be green and ring is green so in this case when i look on my coloring on a side i can very fast identify oh this is object this is object this is object this is dodge and burn that is color correction. So it just, uh, you can create your own pattern. I don't think it's any preset specifically colors, but uh, just organization does help when you need to come back after and do other stuff. So anyway, we create new layer. Let's call it clouds. And for the clouds, 
the one thing what I'm going to use, and I cannot share this because it's purchases. I got Ron's fog, and he have it. Ron's he Devnis. He created very good brushes. We can you can create it if you type on a line and just says a fog brush in a tons of free brushes. Just select one that you like it. I will just use it probably one very basic one. Just idea to showing you, and we can create hundred percent opacity. And it'll just add a little bit around her. So just blend her with this. Um, you can also more advanced one. What sometimes I do, if you select a different, more complex brush, like for example, you can see um, with this element. Then you want to use a probably Alt key, take a sample, okay, and increase as well. You can go inside the brush properties. Okay, and you can do like shape dynamics and size adjustment, angle, you know, all this randomness and stuff. On this case, every time when you press, they're rotating, they're changing. But usually what I do, I do select colors from scenery. So this way, um, the color adjustments as well apply a little bit from what to our selection is right here and this is just to help kind of smooth a little bit edge blend a little bit more with the clouds what we have it so it just help us kind of okay right here let's go select a little bit wider color and the control z will help some undo stuff Okay, we'll just add a little bit more. Okay, right here, let's go select different color. Okay, any questions? So again, these brushes, if you, um, for those who are interested, so let's let me show you just overall you can get them at um what i said before does 3d and by the way does 3d they're located in utah they're locals and um <clears throat> okay runs let's take a little bit of time so like right here you have a good library Definitely, yeah. And he had a lot of different brushes. Uh, never buy for full price because they very often they go like 50, 70, even percent off. And it's why um, I own a bunch of his libraries. And his brushes is very good. I kind of like them, the high quality. And if you are serious in compositing and everything, you want to build your own library. You want to build your own kind of set of tools that you prefer to use it. So anyway, we added this element. Next, what we want to do, it's a control shift alt e command option alt e take all and combine together. And this will be our glowing. So by the way, I'll if you guys are interested, I can show you a new tool I'm working right now with the guys. They did a very great glow tool, but this is after. So in the glowing, what we need to do is go filter, blur, and we're using the Gaussian blur for this. And one, what I'm looking, it's about radius of the glow I want to affect. So we're going maybe about 10 pixels. Uh, you know what, let's go a little bit bigger, 20 pixels. There you go, that is about right. When I cannot recognize kind of details, we'll go click OK, and we'll switch this to the screen. So see how it's bright now? We don't need to apply this everywhere. For this again, Alt or Option, click on a mask to hide. We'll take a normal brush. We want to soft round edges, 10%. And now we can start painting with a white color. <laughs> we can start painting. This is will add this glowing effect. Same, we can do this around her rings if you want to just add a little bit more glowing. Maybe glow a little bit on her cheeks. Chin, creating a little bit this um, right there. 
<clears throat> Add glowing on the wings. Right there, so I in the air a little bit going down to her need to be a little bit careful with this because it does um kind of lose some information but overall you can see that we created like glowing effect from there i think only a bit more glowing on the top from source we need to create it okay so this is one and um another one we can create a new layer Okay, we'll go fill up with a, actually let's do different way, I'll show you. So we have this and a, we call this God Rays. So we'll create this. For the God Rays, we'll just go and use it to white brush. Soft round, 100%. We'll go from the top point, make small dot, click once, hold down shift and click again. So we can create those lines. And we'll just kind of like creating from a single point, pointing the slides going on different areas. So you can almost like creating race okay. right here. Gonna wings. Okay, you click, hold down shift, click again and release. So it's create these points. Next, we want to go to Blair. Filter, blur, cousin blur, and we'll want to pop up them maybe around right there. So we can see kind of like light strikes. Let's click OK, and we'll convert this to the soft light. So now you can see we have it like almost those gut rays. Again, it's very powerful way to match. So let's go drag and put them a little bit down. But you can still see those strikes, and you can do those. Um, in a way you want it. <clears throat> okay. I think we're actually closer to the end now. Um, let's go add some color correction. Uh, actually, before this, let me do one overall, what I call is global dodge and burn, but it's also add some texturing. So control shift alt E, command option alt E, um, global dodge and burn, just call this, or digitalizations. And we're going image adjustments black and white and in black and white we'll just bring it with yellow and red we're going to apply soft light to this and then soft light if it's before 50 percent gray is invisible if it's brighter it's much brighter if it's darker it will have this nice um contrast to this so it's what we're going to do image adjustment again and now shadow and highlights if you don't see all this menu, you probably need to click show more options as open. And we'll go in radius 10 pixels. 10 pixels will take amount for the shadows to 100%, amount for the highlights 100%. And now we can work with these tones to take shadows a little bit down and take tones on the soft light and bring them a little bit up. So click OK and switch to the soft light. It should bring quite a bit like a HDR or deeper look. So again, we don't necessarily need to use the 100% on this one, but we'll just bring this down. This is actually work very well if you look close up on details like clothes, uh, feathering and other ones, it's actually bring nice, this little bit deeper shadows, make the contrast and nicer look. Okay, so be, um, next let's go actually apply before color correction, let's go create new layer and uh, let's call it grain. And remember what I said before, if we look closer right now, her face is smooth. It's like no grain at all. Sky have it quite a bit grain. Some other ones have a different grain. So this is actually kind of does not work very well. And it's only reason why we're doing this grain to smooth that transition between. So we'll go, we fill up with 50% gray. And next we'll go to filter noise and we're going to add a noise. 15% um, work about right for me. You can play around monochromatic. Click OK and switch to the soft light. Okay, sometimes we may have a little bit too much effect. And I can see right here we have this lot of same grain. So let's go bring this to about 50%. And 
And now you can see they kind of start matching because the grains is matching between them. Even we still have it larger um, elements here, but the overall, they're kind of blending better. Um, <clears throat> okay, next, let's go start with our color corrections. And color corrections, we'll do, I'll show you several ways how to do, and you can select what you like it best. Selective colors is kind of one of the nicer and easier to do. Um, we'll go to the start with the black. This is bottom, it's how much, how what black level you want to apply it. Usually I'm going at least minus one. I don't like total black. I like a little bit uh, soft black, not crushed black. And here's we have it blue or dark. Usually what I would do, I have it cold or darker colors going kind of cold and light colors going kind of bright. And we have these complementary colors or like a blue and yellow or a green and orange or some other ones colors. You can see the chart complementary. So we'll go a little bit on the blue add green which is add cyanish color and we can bring this little bit up to cyan so just a little bit adjustment now on the neutrals you can see which one is the neutrals is i think we'll go with a zero and we'll go add a little bit warmer yellowish more as a painting add greenish a little bit and warmer red so we'll just add a little bit of this color and now we have it our whites and nice about whites because you can also even create more glowing, but we don't need to I actually want to a little bit take a step down. And the same, I want to put it a little bit warmer color, red, or maybe colder. So you can play around, see um, which color you like it. Nice things about the selective colors. For example, we have it yellow right here. So we can actually play a little bit with these colors. For example, we can bring a little bit more brightness to them and make the a little bit more darker reddish, so a little bit warmer in those colors. We can go with a cyan and blue, so right here, our cyan on the clouds, we can actually make them darker. So you can work a little bit more with the channels in this case. And again, before and after. Overall, creating a tone on the color on the model will help to combine the image together. So this is one way. Another one also I like to use, it's curves. So we'll create a new curve. Let's go call it color. And uh, important is for the blend mode to go inside the color blend mode. So when creating blend mode color, now we work with the channels. Nice things about this, it's one effect luminosity. It will affect only the colors, which is nice. Contrast will stay same. So now we have it blue. We can bring same called blue. Take middle, bring down. So yellow, and now we have it compensation, blue, dark and a mid and lighter going kind of warmer color. So we have this deeper kind of color distinguish. We'll go with the red and we'll just take colder a little bit cyanish because it's a bit better, I think, for this. And we'll just restore a red back to normal. Okay, so right here you can see we applied. Um, for those who are a little bit uh, lazy or like affirmation like me, you can create new layer, Control shift alt e and um it's called plugin filter forge and again i don't make any money from <laughs> these guys just uh, showing what tools i'm using so in filter forge i do like it um because you can actually go in and you can create your own filters a uh, phototon i create this filter and it's free download everything this is just have a very fast way you can create presets like and uh, very fast apply them so for example we can go here you can set okay i like this tone you can play with the different tones very fast let's go into settings and in a settings and go let's go a little bit warmer on a red cyanish so you can see we can i think around that color maybe better okay and now all what you do is just you have it preset, you can save, you apply it, and it's done. And they have a tons of different paint brush, whatever. I think it's like 60,000. I don't know how many filters they have. But it's crazy amount of the filters. But this is just how I say it's another options. And um, I think we're almost done on this one. 
So let me finish with this. And you can see just a nice punch creating layers. Again, if you don't want it, you can create, take a little bit down. And we have other colors, same things you can do with other colors. It just one way or another, whatever you like to do. I think maybe on selective colors a little bit too much. So let me take selective a little bit down right here. Okay, um, questions. I think we are wrapping up right now. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. You can chat with microphone or you can type. Um, I don't have any questions. I think you covered it pretty thoroughly. It'll be nice to be able to watch the video a little bit slower too. Okay. Yeah, I, Jose, I will post this video after it's finished um, recording. So it will take a little bit of time so you can have a step. Anytime if you have any question, just ask me. I understand sometimes because, sorry, it is I'm on a 4K monitor and some of those letters is teeny tiny. So I, I will re-record. Um, I re tutorials other ones i try to record on 1080p so people can see a little bit um bigger numbers but if you have any problems give me um just send me a message ask whatever you need it and uh, so and yes the some of you do not receive email from um when you purchase the ticket it's supposed to send you information some of you did not so i will try to send you another email to those with a link with a zoom directly again um i don't know how long zoom will keep it alive but they sometimes delete the videos so be sure you download it on your computer that video i will download it as well just in case and i'll put it in dropbox so if you do not receive link let me know i will send it anyway but just in case if you need it just let me know and i'll send you link to the video okay any other questions Thank you so much. Okay, that's all. Thank you, guys. Well, have a nice rest of the day and uh, just try to do it seriously and post it. I will really appreciate if you do your work and share and post it and uh, promote me <laughs> <laughs> or something. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. Thank have you. Have a nice one. Mm -hmm.